So tech layoffs have been happening for a while. The thing I've always wondered is in these tech layoffs, how many layoffs have actually affected software engineers, right? There's a bunch of people that work in tech, but are not technical or aren't software engineers. So tech layoffs since COVID-19. And you can see here that right when the pandemic was kind of announced, Q1, Q2, 2020, companies started laying people off. But then 2022 hits. And 2022 is the recession in general. Inflation is at an all-time high. And this is when COVID is about ending. So we, we can kind of track this as when COVID starts and when COVID ends. And we can see that in 2022, a thousand tech companies laid off about 165,000 employees. And then it only increases all the way until 2023. So if you go to 2023 over here, you can see the same amount of tech companies, like about a thousand, laid off 262 thousand people. Um, okay. So we can see here that in fact, this graph is, is kind of sexy. Like it just goes up and then it goes down, uh, but we can see like all the different companies by month, basically Jan, Feb, March, April. And so it seems like June, the summer months are when a lot of companies start laying people off, but the most layoffs happen in the fall. You know, someone said here, Oh my God, I'm so sad. It's disheartening. Well, don't worry. These look like big numbers, but they're not all software engineers. In fact, a majority of them are not software engineers. Now, one other interesting thing I wanted to cover was that there were a few high profile companies with layoffs that were outliers where instead of the five or 10%, they laid off a chunk of software engineers, notably Meta and Coinbase. And most of them were junior engineers. And I want to cover this because I know a lot of you watching are either trying to get into software engineering or you're junior developers yourself, and you might be a little bit scared. So let's like dive into this repo and see what's actually been going on. And so he, what he did was a brief analysis into the November, 2022 meta layoffs. And he examined which departments and levels of seniority were impacted the most. Okay, cool. This is the most interesting one. Self-reported meta layoffs by department and years of experience. And I mostly care about engineering. So as you can see, most of the engineers who were laid off had only one to three years of experience, what I would call junior or new grad engineers. So when engineers are super junior, a lot of these people might still be in boot camp. In fact, I had some friends who had just started done like two months of onboarding and were laid off. The company is actually investing a lot of dollars into making them better by teaching them stuff, by having senior engineers give them their time, by mentoring them, doing code reviews. And so these are the easiest to cut. The four to six is a different story. The four to six, they've been in industry for a while. They have a decent amount of experience. They understand how things are done. I'd say this is like, uh, you know, mid mid to senior, it depends on the company. These people are actually valuable. Sure, less valuable than maybe a seven to 10 years of experience, but valuable. The seven to 10 are the senior engineers, the staff engineers. These people lead teams. They have proven themselves. When they come, they hit the ground running. They don't need that much coaching. And better yet, they can actually coach the four to six years of experience engineers to become qualified like them or even some of the more junior engineers. The 10 plus is, is kind of a weird story because it looks like it's more, but a lot of 10 plus years of experience have like title inflation. And so a lot of these people are kind of overpaid for how good they are. Like maybe they're only as good as a seven to 10 years of experience or four to six years of experience, but they interviewed well, they came at the right time. Maybe their company got acquired. And so Meta and these big companies are like, if we get rid of them, we can normalize salaries. We can maybe hire another person with 10 plus years, years of experience, but just pay them less. And so it's a way for them to normalize salaries because remember you can never go down once you promise someone something. Um, okay, observation. Recruiting was impacted the most, but engineering isn't too far behind. Together, these two departments comprise nearly 50% of all self-reported layoffs. And then although recruiting makes up the largest percentage, only 8% of them require visa support. That's a silver lining. Even though there was almost 50% were recruiters, only 8% of them have a lot to be worried about. The rest just need to wait until the market rebounds. Everyone needs recruiters. At some point, everyone's going to be hiring. Okay, so I came across this article. How much have 2022 layoffs affected engineers versus other departments? And they dug into the data to find out, and it was updated summer of last year. You know, there've been a lot of like fear mongering pieces in the press, like, oh my God, it's the recession. It's the age of AI. Will tech ever come back? Will you have a job? And it's mostly engineers that are concerned because engineers had the heyday. You graduated in like 2020. It was easy to get a job. It was very comfortable, free food. And suddenly it's like, oh my God, has my whole life been a lie? Am I going to be on the streets? And the answer is no. So the questions they wanted to answer was disambiguate tech layoffs. And they wanted to answer what percentage of employees got laid off overall? What's the breakdown of layoffs by department and how hard was each department hit? So what percent of employees got laid off overall based on the companies they looked at? About 19% of employees were laid off. So this is probably an average. Some companies maybe 50%, some, some companies maybe 5%, about 19 to 20% of employees were laid off. Uh, okay, by department. This is where it gets interesting. So you can see here that in 2022, software engineering was a small part, like a minuscule amount compared to sales and product design. I'm kind of surprised that recruiting was this low. I always thought that recruiting was much higher, but maybe we'll see the graph. Maybe 2023 was where it was hit the most. And that's why I'm so excited to partner with Dice, the place to find your dream job in tech and hire people for your team. DICE recently came out with their new tech salary report for 2024. And the conclusions are thought provoking. Looking at the executive summary, we can see that companies cut back on their cloud spending and some of the biggest names in tech, Google, Meta, Amazon, reduced their headcounts by thousands of workers. But despite these wave of cuts, thanks to 
to all the innovation in AI, a recession never hit. Layoffs dipped throughout the rest of 2023 and the tech unemployment rate remained low, hinting at robust demand throughout the economy for tech professionals with the right mix of skills and experience. As for tech salaries, growth slowed in 2023. Tech professionals with five or fewer years of experience felt the salary stagnation the most, which confirms our analysis that junior engineers are taking the brunt of the impact. Further, more people are dissatisfied with their current levels of compensation than ever before. And companies are realizing that differentiated benefits are key to attracting and retaining top talent. And last but not least, did you know that nearly half of tech professionals saw an increase in their bonus for 2023? Which is a good reminder that it's never really as bad as it seems. To see more insights, and read Dice's full text salary report completely for free, check out my link in the description. Now let's dive back into the layoffs. How hard was each department hit? So here we go. So by department, when you factor in the amount of people at this company and what proportion of that department makes up the total company size, then you can see here that non-technical, non-software engineering roles were impacted the most and then 10% software engineer. Of those, what math did we do before? Like 420, 450,000 employees that were laid off between 2022 and 2024, 10% of them were software engineers. That's about 40,000 employees. Still an insane amount of people, but way less than, you know, if you see a TechCrunch article that's like 400,000 tech workers were laid off and you're like, oh my God, will I get a job? It's like, wait a second. So in two years, 40,000 employees were laid off huge companies, companies with 50,000 engineers, 100,000 engineers, right? Across them all, if you add a Microsoft, Google, Uber, Lyft, Stripe, Netflix, across all of these companies that had layoff, Coinbase, about 40,000 employees, te technical software engineers were laid off. And there's still a distinction between product and design and software engineering. So if you can see like, you know, in most companies, the tech org is called EPD, engineering, product, and design. Even an EPD in the tech org that are technical people, still software engineers were impacted the least right behind product and design. According to our data, almost half of HR people and recruiters got laid off as compared to only 10% of engineers and only 4% of salespeople. So it's very interesting here. I mean, graphs are just so beautiful. You can see here 4% for sales, but then over here you see it as the most because this one didn't factor in the department size. Okay, so what does this mean for engineer? Although engineers didn't emerge from this year's layoff unscathed, our data shows that lumping everyone together under tech is misleading. So HR teams and recruiters were hit the hardest by far. What this basically means is that usually if like recruiters get cut or HR gets cut, as a tech engineer sitting at a company, you should start thinking, you know, there might be layoffs. Maybe I should, maybe I should brush up my resume, maybe start applying out there. Something might might be going wrong. And, and so recruiters are kind of the canaries for, for tech. Okay, it's cool. So if you're very anxious about not having a job, that's unjustified. If you're like, oh my God, I never get a wrong, uh, never get a job, that's that's wrong. So this is the truth. There was a point when engineers were like the kings of the job market. I want free haircuts. I want free food. I want massages. I want a fully reimbursed trip once a year. Like that's not happening anymore right? The market is sober down. Tech companies have realized they don't have to give you that much. As long as they pay you a little bit more than the rest of jobs you can get, where are you going to go? Yeah. They don't feed you. They get rid of dinner. Like what are you going to do? A plane? Okay. Go on blind. Okay. And then do what? You're going to swallow your pride. You're going to come back to work. Should you be anxious that you might never get a job again? No. Should you be anxious, anxious that you don't have as much leverage? Sure. But that shouldn't be a reason for anxiety. That's just like reality. Like realize that we had insane amount of privilege, a lot of it unwarranted, honestly, for the amount of work we do right? There's like healthcare workers that are actually saving lives. And we're sitting here just like typing on a keyboard and then being like, oh, I want a pedicure right now. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. And yes, there are more engineers on the market competing for the same jobs and they're specialized and they've been studying and you can't just like show up and do like to someone leak code and get an $800,000 paying job. Yeah. But that's, that's capitalism. That's how the market works. That's competition. That's how we get the best products. That's how we get the best people. That's how we get the best benefits. And that's how our economy grows. Now I'm not here trying to be a simp for the American economy and being like, work hard for the big tech company. Like I couldn't care less. What that means is you got to swallow your pride. You got to be like, okay, the last couple of years were fun. I don't have to do that much. And it, you know, it was fine. Times have changed, which means now I've got to get my shit together. I got to go practice. I got to go build projects. I got to go interview. I got to work hard and I got to do better than everyone else. And th that's how it's been for everything, right? So the one thing I wanted to do here was there's some footnotes. If you're curious, even though only 5% of total layoffs were engineers, about 10% of engineers were laid off. Now let's say this is a little bit on the lower end because there were some companies like Meta and Coinbase, which didn't lay off just five or 10%. They laid off like 20, 30% of software engineers. And so maybe instead of 10%, we can say like 15% of engineers were laid off, but that's still way less than what all these articles and sources were saying, where it was like, oh my God, 50% of software engineers, will tech ever be the same? Will it recover? That's not true anymore. So to summarize, there's been a lot of fear mongering and I don't blame anyone. You have to play the game. The only way to make money is to sell news, to sell products, to sell whatever. And so all these news articles, 
And everyone on LinkedIn and Reddit and Blind has been scaring everybody by being like, oh my God, there's so many tech layoffs. We'll never be able to get a job. It's the age of AI. Like, will tech ever be the same? And it always happens when the market's down. And when it's up, everyone's like, oh my God, tech is a dream. Getting a job is so easy. I can't believe other people aren't being software engineers. The truth is, yes, there are about 420 to 450,000 employees that were laid off. When it comes to actually software engineers of that big number, 420 to 450,000 employees, it was only about 10 to 15% that were laid off, which means if you're a software engineer and trying to get a job, yes, it's going to be harder than it was three years ago. Is it impossible? No. Will you have to do things differently? Yes. Do I have recommendations for you? Yes. And I'll be making a video on this very soon. Bottom line is specialize. You've got to specialize to differentiate yourself. And I'm telling you this, I was laid off in July of last year. I'd been on the market for six months. Some of those months I was taking a break and chilling, which I hope you do too. You deserve it. But then I was recruiting pretty hard. I was doing interviews like it was my full-time job. And did I get rejected? I got rejected in insane same amount. Bottom line is it'll be fine. It's just going to take some time and effort. And yes, you'll have bad days and you'll get sad and you'll be like, oh my God, what if I become homeless? I'm telling you, you won't. As long as you do what I'm trying to tell you, which is put in the effort. That's all I have today. I will see you soon. Bye.